I have eight random questions here. You get three okay. rolls on the tower, and whatever you roll, that's where we start. No, that's scary. I don't like it. Wait, you need to put it in Oh, the, put it in there? Oh. It's a dice tower. I don't know what the dice tower <laughs> Honestly, is. Honestly, I'm I not didn't, a gamer girl. If I didn't own this, I wouldn't know either. Five. I want your favorite part of the acting process, like putting your costume oh. on for the first time, hitting set for the first time, but then also not necessarily your least favorite, but the part of the process where, you know, you see room to grow for yourself and can try something <laughs> new. <laughs> wow, we really are jumping right in. Okay, you favorite. You wrote it. <laughs> but you wrote it. And then picked it. Jesus Christ. In that case, I, I actually saw four. <laughs> I can do that one next to no, you. I like that. We're getting them all anyway. Okay, my favorite part and my least favorite. Let's start with the negative. Okay. Wait, so least favorite part of the acting process not, or where I have room to grow? Those are two very it's not, different That's the thing. Questions. It's not necessarily, like, it looks nicer when I write favorite, least favorite in our little graphic, yeah. but it's not necessarily a negative thing. It's like okay. a, a place in the process where you can experience something new. You know what? Yes. Okay. I could prep sooner. I could do some of my prep earlier. It just, it depends on... Um, the project, like for example, like Green Bank, right? I have this script so far in advance. We don't even have a start date yet, but I will be, I'll have my lines memorized for, like I approach movies like I approach plays. I'm gonna memorize that thing back to front, page by page, boom. TV, it's a lot easier to like save learning lines until in the car ride on the way to work because I know the character so well. I'm not like, that I that I'm like okay I I know who she is I know what motivates her I can show up and just like kind of be present and see what happens um, so it's so it's sometimes better if the lines aren't like so cemented but then it's mostly that I just get all panicky I've never gone to work not prepared I'm always prepared but it's just that then I'll wake up and be like oh my god I don't know my line for what it's worth I waver every single interview I do whether I should be prepared to a T where I know my questions word for word or if you or should if be I off the cuff just, or if I should just like chill out right. because then I feel beholden to that exactly. and less likely to go down a path that might be interesting that I didn't expect exactly thank you <laughs> and I guess that does that kind of... Yeah, I'd say my favorite parts of the process are the same as my least favorite. And that, like, I love prep. I love that time when the character and all the ideas and the whole inner world is just mine. And I haven't shared it with anyone yet. Like, I haven't showed up to work and shared it with the director or shared it with the other actors. And no one knows, and it's private. But then I also love getting to work and that getting thrown out the window and just seeing what happens in the moment. Like... I'm 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 selfish and then I'm collaborative. Do you dare roll again? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I, if it's five again, I swear to God. We can we can then defer to sign. We can defer to four. I like four. Okay. One. You are in a yellow jackets type situation. Huh. You're stranded in the wilderness with a bunch of your friends. I want your greatest asset, the thing that you bring to the group that could help everybody survive. But then I also want your greatest weakness, the thing that would do you all in. Oh God, my greatest asset, my greatest asset, <laughs> my sense of humor. I keep everyone laughing, um, but an actual skill set, do I have any? I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm a good rallier. Okay. Like I could like get it's everyone important. together to talk about what we're gonna do. Do I know what we're gonna do? No, but I'll start the conversation. I have a question. Why did I do Let's this Let's see, which, which question, six. Six? No, no, that's, I'm asking you, what's my sixth question? What uh, okay. is your most <laughs> emotional fear? My emotion, my most emotional fear is intimacy. Are you afraid of? <laughs> Just keep being going. Left <laughs> behind. <laughs> list I, is really this, is, this is like really dark now. Yeah, I'm, afraid, game I'm afraid of anything bad happening to my family, and oh. I'm afraid of <laughs> failing, failing in my career. <laughs> I'm saying that with like a big smile and How laugh on my get face. Here? I don't know, but now I want yours. What's like oh, your God. like a real deep emotional fear? That I will mess up. You have to match oh, mine now. Oh, the... I just went dark. <laughs> okay, okay. You want a real one? Okay. That I've I've finally met someone I really love, and I am too messed up, and I'm going to destroy it. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> Oh, the, twi call the, the twist on that is if you don't feel that way, it might not be as important to you hey. and it might be a sign you don't care as much as maybe you should. And I can say the same about you and your career and how much you love your family. You're right. It's this true, is actually though. therapy it's night. It's true. I like it. I like it. <laughs> now we got to, what is it, six? Six oh, or this nine. One, this one's fun. Okay. Wait, there is no nine. 
Sometimes I forget that too. Um, this is slumber party. Okay. What three famous people would you invite to your slumber party? Do they have to be alive? No. It'll okay. Be whoever you want. Well, <clears throat> how about Whitney Houston when she was like 20? Um, Whitney Houston when she was like 20. You know what? I'd be really curious to talk to Jesus. Like, what what was up with that? You know what? Fair I'll throw enough. Moses in there because I just learned a lot more about Jewish history and how Passover came to be, and I didn't know how important Moses was to them. So <laughs> Moses, Jesus, and a 20-year-old Whitney Houston. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Welcome back for a brand new edition of Collider Ladies Night with one of my favorites, Jasmine Savoy Brown's Ah. here. I've wanted you on this show. Feels like for so long, but I feel like it's just since Scream 6, even though I had seen some of your work before, but you you spoke to my soul. I mean Scream 5. You spoke to my soul in Scream 5. Well, thank you. I I give all the credit (laughs) to the writers. So you have that dream. When you decide you actually want to make it your profession, what do you think is step one to becoming a working actor? And now, having done it, would you recommend that as a first step to somebody else who's just starting out? What? Yeah, I thought the first step was to move. I mean, I was actually pretty strategic for an 18-year-old. I auditioned for school. Like, I wanted to go to musical theater school, get a BFA. I didn't get in anywhere. Boo. I got into one place, but I couldn't afford to go there. The story sounds better if I, don't I say like I didn't any get of in those. anywhere. Anyway, <clears throat> um, so I thought, okay, I need to move somewhere, and I'm just going to give TV acting and film acting a try. I'll find somewhere, take some acting classes, and I thought I could move to L.A., I, I could move to New York, and I thought, no, and I'll be a really small fish in a big pond. I should move somewhere smaller where I can become the big fish in the small pond. So I moved to Portland, Oregon, because it's like they get a few ne- – well, at the time – over 10 years ago, they'd get a few national commercials a year, had a few TV shows. And I thought, I can do that. I can, in like two years, I gave myself work on every show and do a few um, commercials. And uh, luckily, I was right. You I, were on Grimm, weren't you? I was. Yes. <laughs> this makes sense. This makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I was on Grimm. And I did a commercial for like Obamacare or something. And I had a, a, um, a small part in a movie called Laggies. Ah. Directed by the late Lynn Shelton. Great movie. Great Starring director. Starring Keira Knightley. Um, and I also just took some acting classes and, like, learned the different way to act on screen versus TV. And then once I got my SAG card, I thought, all right, I did all I could here. And I moved to L.A. I want to follow up on where you started with that because I always love discussing going to school or not going to school on this show because there are so many situations where really talented people just aren't accepted into a program oh because God. I feel like those auditions don't usually get at like like the heart and the essence of what someone's capable of. And then there's also situations where people get in and they can't afford it, which is just such yeah. an incredible shame to somebody for to somebody out there who thinks school is not an option or is wind up being told that school is not an option for them, what is another path they can pursue so they could study their craft, try things out in a safe space, and actually get an opportunity to learn? Yeah, I think that's such a great question. I mean, these days there are so many resources online. Um, But before I get into that, like, it's just about working on your craft, like you said. So I would say find local theater um, in your area and do that. Watch Stuff like this, watch round tables, learn about the craft, check out the books, study the craft and apply it if you can get into an acting class in your area. And then, like, uh, I hate to say it, but it really is all about online presence these days. So even if it's just like recording some monologues or like throwing a scene up on TikTok or even on Instagram, you actually never know who's going to watch your stuff. And sometimes tagging random people. Like, I actually go to my mentions often and will, like, watch the random things I'm tagged in. And, like, there have been times someone has tagged me in something like that, like a monologue or something. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. You never know who might repost it or who might, um, I don't know, want to, like, who will see it. And then that will open other doors. But it's about your craft at the end of the day. That is so incredibly true. I love that piece of advice, especially that's one thing that I really do appreciate about TikTok now, whether it's someone in that position posting a monologue or even there's like a couple of uh, music artists that I never knew before TikTok. But because they came up on my For You page, I bought their music. Yeah. paid to make sure that their incredible work was supported. Yeah. I think that's how I found Orla Gartland. I think that was on was TikTok and she's an Irish 
singer who tours a lot with Dodie. Anyway, you just never know. To your point, you never know. what if you're, if you're good at what you do and you put it online, chances are someone will see it. I love that. I love that positive way of looking online, too, because I feel like social media often gets a negative connotation. But, like, if you associate with the right people, the right creators, and are exploring the right corners, there's so much to gain from yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, there can be. Makes me happy. All right. I have a specific person to bring up that I know you gained something from, Regina King. So I was reading an interview you did where I think you called her like your first mentor because she invited you over for dinner and she gave you advice. And I was wondering, can you share one piece of advice she gave you that ultimately you wound up using and it helped you out? Yeah, I think Regina is very much about like at the time was telling me to be true to myself, you know, just to like stay true to me. And that is really helpful in this industry. There's a lot of, I mean, you know, (laughs) there's so much going on as much of it as like real honest conversations. There's just as much make it look like you're having a real honest conversation. Um, And it's nice to keep keep the center of who you are. Just having a conversation with Michelle Rodriguez for the show, and she was heavily emphasizing when you start, you draw your lines, and you never cross your lines, because if you cross that line even once, you're more susceptible to doing it again. Yeah, that's really true. And it's also okay to adjust your lines. That's a good addition there. Like, my lines change depending on the seasons of my life. Like, that could even be uh, like a sex scene, for example. Like, I think at the beginning of my career, I would have done pretty much anything. Like, I've been I've been disrobed a few times on screen um, because it made sense to me. But now when I think about it, there was, like, a scene or two early on where that wasn't really necessary. And so now I'm just not going to unless I think it furthers the story. Or, like, in the case of um, Yellow Jackets... Uh, when Van and Ty are, like, swimming in the lake or whatever, that wasn't necessarily necessary to see these two people um, without their clothes. But I thought, like, it was a really beautiful... It just was a beautiful kind of important moment for, like, queer representation in the sense of, like, we're seeing these straight couples, like, having sexy scenes or being naked all the time. Like, I don't know, how often are we seeing two female characters in an interracial relationship just, like... I just thought that was a beautiful image, and it showed the intimacy of their relationship. I'm just thinking about it more now than like, yeah, I really want the job. It's like, no, I. does it further the story? Does it mean something to me? Speaking of queer representation and all different forms of representation, I was reading another interview you had done where you were emphasizing, you know, an interest in producing and getting certain stories that are important to you told on screen. And it was making me wonder, do you remember the very first time on a professional set where, like, you noticed your voice being heard in a different way, where when you expressed your opinion on something, you could see the power in it, that it could change something and do it for the better. Yeah. I mean, that's happened a few times. Um, I think something that comes to mind is this season on Yellow Jackets, we've seen more scenes with Taisa and Akila, And I'm definitely a part of that. Yeah, because, like, let's be honest, if there's two black girls in a group of uh, and they're the only two they're gonna stick together especially in a survival scenario um and nia and i both believe that that's happening a lot more off screen than we happen to see on screen but i've been championing that from the beginning that we see that um and so it's nice that that got taken into account season two we've they've had more scenes together I have abused my screeners for Yellow Jackets. I have, <laughs> I have watched my screeners so many times that when I started preparing for this particular interview, I got an alert that said, you have hit your maximum oh, no. on these. Stop watching. <laughs> so you watched each episode five times. Is it five? To, to, to be completely honest, I didn't watch them all the way through five times, okay, but I fair. prepared for many an interview. And I, I always like to go back and refer to particular yeah, lines and, you know, rewatch at least with one particular character's arc in mind. Yeah. But then the fine folks at Showtime refreshed, so I watched all of Jasmine's scenes, all of your <laughs> scenes all over again. Um, oh, wow. Okay, but before I even get to the new season, I want to go back to the very beginning, the audition. What would you say is the biggest difference between how you pictured Thaisa when you auditioned for the role for the first time and then who she became? as you started shooting the season and got to explore more? Oh, that's a good question. Back at the audition, I didn't know she was going to be so serious. 
Like, she's just so serious all the time. Girl, relax. Unless she's with Van in the younger generation. Um, yeah, I didn't know she was so dark and serious. Um, but I think that is that is partly the writing, but also it must just be something in me that I brought to the role. Uh yeah, because the audition scenes were just about, they were both on the soccer field talking about what to do about Allie. It's just very teenagery stuff. I think that is a big difference. Episode one, they're very much teenagers. And then two on, they're teenagers in crisis. So, like, in a way, they're adults, but they're also children. Like, we never really get to, we don't get to see the teens mm-hmm. that much. You brought up uh, Van, so I'll go to Liv next. So, we were talking about this at the junket. What Liv did with their performance is basically act their way into a major series long arc, I would assume, and not having the character die in season one, which is very, very special. Do you remember the very first time you two shared a scene on set where where you felt that like you you kind of stopped and said to yourself, like, damn, they're doing something really special and the show can't let go of it? That's a great question. I mean, all of the scenes with Liv are really fun. They like to improv sometimes. They bring a really special energy to set and to their character. I mean, we had a lot of fun. I, the first thing that comes to mind is the wolf attack, which is kind of ironic because that's when, like, they would be dead. So prior to that, um, I would say the first time that Ty and Van are, like, making out against the tree and we're just seeing something, a different side of each of them in private, it felt like the heart of the show in a way and Liv brought that <laughs> sparkle that butch king energy <laughs> that I see people calling Van online it's really? so funny <laughs> yeah someone said imagine being Tyson Turner Tyson Turner and you fumbled the bag with a uh, a sexy butch king in your <laughs> teens and then also with like a hot femme queen in your 40s. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> like imagine. What a harsh assessment. Jeez. But it's true though. I guess so. no it is like, true. Damn, Tyson. It is true. Season 2, I guess this is episode 2/3, slash the the eating scene and the aftermath. I was just wondering it's more of a theory than anything. Do you think that Taisa, if she were not under control of the other when they were eating, if she was her real self, would oh. she have eaten? <gasps> That's a really good question. You know what? That's so interesting. I wonder if her moral I think her moral high ground would have had her wanting to say no. But I also think that she would have thought through, like, how are we going to survive the winter? This might be our only option. I could see her going back and forth, but I could see her ultimately doing it or at least pretending to do it simply to not become Ben Scott. Like, you can't be the one who didn't in a group like this, like in a survival situation. For so many reasons. You have to at least (laughs) fake it so that no one gets mad at you, you know? Now or like he, He's ostracized now, and he's weak. Yeah, exactly. I mean, she threw up all the food the next day. Yeah. Just like, girl, could you not keep it down? So, speaking speaking like, of which, damn. ever since our last conversation, when I rewatched that, I'm like, oh, it's stew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think about that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the details that Chunky I think stew. about. Yeah. When you're playing the other, do you have to decide on what the other's goals are just to justify the other's actions as you're That's walking good through question. them. I will just for that moment. Like, I don't I don't want to get too deep into the motivations, et cetera, of the other because I don't want to go off the rails. And those scenes are so quick that I just go based on what the other wants in that moment, which is, like, either to find – how much do we know by episode six? I mean, episode walk six into is, the trees. Yeah, episode six is – The most devastating episode I've seen yet. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, like whether it's like to find a symbol on a tree or if it's um, to follow the no-eyed man, just that simple. Here's a specific one. What about when the other tells Van, yes, come? Yeah. God, right? That's that's the moment that really put that idea in my mind. (laughs) Yeah. What was I thinking? You know, again, when I don't have information, I'll just try something different every single take. Like, that's just kind of the way that I am as an actor anyway. Unless a director is like, that, stay exactly in that lane. Even then, still, I don't want to do it the same every time. So I'll keep my motivation but do something slightly different. When I know nothing, I make a different choice every take. So on some of them, it was sinister. On some, it was like, 
oh, that's a good idea. On some it was, yeah, you can help me. Uh, So it just kind of depends on what they end up going with. Touching on Lottie now in particular. So in this season, it seems like Ty's had multiple opportunities to kind of teeter more and more towards following Lottie's teachings. Is there any particular thing that happened that you think pushed her in that direction the most? Like like I had noted down, you know, when, when they find Travis and it's there is something deep inside of you that's connected to all this. Like, is that the thing that made her believe? Um, you know, I'm the not sleeping getting she better. Believes is Ooh, the thing. Okay. Like <laughs> I know people keep saying that, that, oh, well, when she says that Lottie cured her sleepwalking, I still think that she might think that was kind of a fluke. Like, I'm not of the belief that Thaisa fully believes. I have to let you go. But I have a million more questions, and that just means you have to come back to Ladies' Night sometime soon. Congratulations. Congratulations on Scream, Yellow Jackets, everything you accomplished, and everything that's coming your way in the future. Thank you. We'll do this again. 